Ինչև դուք սկսեք, ես ես կնամ, շնորակալ եմ շատ, շատ ուրախ եմ, որ սա անում ենք, նոնաջանք ես բարի երդ, հաճորացում։ Ինչպես կիտեք աշխատանքային լազում լինելու անգլերերը, հետևապար ամբոշ տասախոցի Ուղալ, այդպիսի հայց մտացում է, որ կարող է հնչի, կարող է մարդիկ լինեն, ովքեր որ չի հայց կանան, այդ տեպքում ինձ կարծում եմ, կպործեմ ինչ կան հնարավոր է պարս խոսել, ձերքի հետ ասել նաև հայրեն է ինչ կան հնարավոր որ ենք խոսեր միասին ու փորձեն պարզապանել ձեր բոլոր հարցերը։ Ոկ, սո, թերը որ գույնք թե թաք բավոտ պլեջորիզմ, կրոդիկլ վենքին պարվրիզինք։ Ակշուլի, այլ ալսո ինկլուրդ լիտրիչուր ռիվյու։ Պլեջորիզմ բլագիատ So today we're going to have the outline. At first, we're going to talk about academic writing. After that, we're going to talk about types of academic writing. Then we need to discover together what uh, makes good writing. Then writing with verbs, plumbs taxonomy, do's and don'ts in an academic writing, the concept of critical thinking, concept of plagiarism, paraphrasing, rephrasing, principles of 4R, and literature review. Of course, it may seem a little bit more for one day, but I will try to cover it as easy as it is possible. Այս էրախեկճան ավոտուլայն նա, որի մասին ասոր խոսերն ենք։ The first thing that we are going to talk is what is academic writing and why do students really need that? So academic writing is a formal style of writing used in universities and scholarly public Այմ են ակազեմիական գրույթը, որպես այդպիսին տա պաշտանական ոչ է, որը իրենից ներկայացնում է բոլորի կողմից համան հնտանուր ոչ, որտաք գրում են տա համասերաներում և ակազեմիական էդիտորիլներում։ It is formal and unbiased, clear and precise, focused and well-structured, well-sourced, correct and consistent, but it is not personal, long-winded, emotional. Եգև մի փոքր հասկանանք որոնք են տարպերությունները ստայլի ոչի հետ կապված, որեմն ակածեմիական գրույթի լենիս ներկայացնում է պաշտանական և ոչ կողնակալ ոչ, այն պետք ալինի պարս և ճշկրիտ, և էմոցիոնալ։ Եկեք ես հատվածում մի փոքր խոսենք մի ասին հասկանանք, որոնք են տարպերությունները։ Երբ ամոն ուսանողներից ես հարսում են, թե ինչ է նշանակում Well Source։ Well Source նշանակում է, որ ծանկացած ինչ ստեիտմենտ գրելուց հետա ամպայման պետք ունենամ հխում, եթե հխում չի լինոմ և այդ միտքը իմը չի արդենք տալիս է դա բլայգիատ և ունենում է որոշակի խնդիրներ։ Այնչ պետք ալինի անձնական, այսիքն պետք զորկ լինի էմոցիոնալ ինչ-որ եզրույթներից, ինչ կան նավորա պետք ալինի ակդեմիկ։ Now let's understand what's the importance of good academic writing. Here I differentiated you guys different terms according to which now we're going to try to understand what it makes the good writing. With a bad picture, diction, thesis driven, tone, language, punctuation, academic conventions, evidence-based reasoning, complexity, and higher order thinking. Now I'm going to explain each one step by step uh, for you to make it clear. What is the big picture? Uh, unlike fiction or journalistic writing, overall the structure of academic writing is formal and logical. As you know, everything should be well organized. It must be cohesive and should possess a logically organized flow of ideas. It means that whatever you write, you need to keep the flow for the reader to understand what you're talking about. After that, this means that the various parts are connected to each other logically and they act as a whole. 
there should be a narrative links between the sentences and paragraphs. Each, every sentence, an upcoming sentence should be very clearly um, joined together that you try to keep the flow. Like overall, the big picture, it means that the reader understand what you are talking about. It means that your manuscript communicates. The second one here is coming tone. Guys, okay, so always remember that tone matters. The overall tone refers to the attitude conveyed in a piece of writing. So throughout your paper, it is important that you present the arguments in a way that uh, it, it becomes fair and it has the appropriate language. In other words, then you present a, a position or argument that you disagree with, there is no need to try to criticize everything from the very first hand. So you need to represent everything in a way that it is polite and it is written in a proper tone. After that, we have here a dictation, uh, sorry, diction. Diction refers to the choice of words that you use. From time to time, I've noticed that when my students try to bring some articles to me, I noticed that we try to have the wrong choices of the words, vocabulary. Of course, in the end of the lecture, I will try to come up with solutions, suggestions, how we can develop together your word choice errors, because I know from time to time, how it happens, like the negative transfer from the Armenian language into English, that a little bit uh, makes the uh, overall process of understanding difficult. So I, I know that you're Armenian, and for you, maybe it is a little bit difficult to try exact to find try to find the exact words. Uh, maybe you need to find a native speaker, uh, but I guess that it's a little bit difficult to, uh, question in the region and overall in Armenia to find neg uh, the uh, native speaker. For that reason, there are a lot of books like the vocabulary, the ready-made chunks that would help to kind of solve this problem. It should be thesis driven. In other words, like you have your statement, the main statement, and you need to build your writing in a way that every time it tries to answer the uh, questions provided by you related to your physics statement. Language. Then it comes to language. Guys, make sure not to have any grammatical errors, any punctuation errors. Like I will I try to actually connect language and punctuation together. So I try and make sure of that you do not have any linguistic uh, possible errors. It relates to grammar, it relates to the lexics, it re relates to the uh, punctuation. Everything should be done in a way that the reader enjoys the reading. Academic conventions, like you understand that you need to keep the flow, you understand that it should be cohesive, it should be coherent, everything should be done in a proper linguistic way. Evidence-based reasoning, like you have your statement and you are trying with your evidence one more time support your statement and complexity and higher order thinking when i say how higher order thinking here in this case i mean the critical thinking whatever you read and whatever you are citing in your literature it should be very well thought in order to use only the reliable sources and it should be complex enough because anyway it is considered as an academic article uh, Reasoning, uh, Yes, huh?
Okay, <laughs> Uh, here I have for you types of academic rating. From time to time, I have noticed that students actually do not differentiate between which kind of academic manuscripts. Here we have essays, research papers, thesis, research proposal, literature review. And I've noticed that uh, from time to time, they really do not do differentiate what is research paper and what is thesis, etc. Let's try to understand everything together. What is an essay? Maybe in your high school studies, you wrote some essays that your English teacher may have assigned you, or maybe you haven't had an opportunity to write it. Anyway, I'm going here to explain. It's a short self-contained argument often used in a class in response to a structure's question. So here, in other words, you have a title and basically you need to answer the question, but actually it is more typical to write in high school or in college studies rather than in the universities or academic institutions. The second one is the thing that you actually need, research paper. It's a depth investigation based on independent research, the basis to answer the research questions. Always remember guys that when you're going to have your research paper, it means that you need to have research questions and your paper is actually going to be built on the questions that you're going to assign. So you write the paper in order to try to answer the questions of your research. This is and as a large final research project at the end of a degree, like uh, I know that in Armenia, uh, the bachelor students are uh, in their fourth or maybe in some universities in their third year, they actually have their thesis statement, but it requires like four or three months, months to conduct the research and then try to come up with their thesis. What is research proposal? It's an outline of a potential topic and a plan for future, uh, future dissertation or research project. Proposal is kind of the outline, like small, three or four page writing type that includes all the necessary points for your future research work. And the last one that we're going to talk today is related to literature review. It's a critical synthesis of existing research on a topic written to inform the approach of a new piece of research. So basically, guys, always remember that the key for any research is the literature review. It means that at first you need to go and find for a look for for a good literature. After that, you need to understand what your critical writing, which ones you are needed for your research. And after that, you need to already start writing and reviewing your literature. Uh, it includes like, it differs the length. Uh, some papers, some editorial say that your literature review should be two or six pages. Others say that it would be easier for us to have just one page or more pages. It really depends. So you need to check the requirements of the academic paper that you are uh, going to be published. Those were actually the types. Uh, research paper research proposal research proposal research paper. Եվ գրականության հետազոտությունը դա ցանկացած հոդված գրելու ծառաջ պարզավոր ցանկացած գիտնական պետք է գնա եւ կատարի քի գրականության հետազոտություն։ Իրենից ներկայացնում է որ պետք է կարդա բազում ուսերի աղբյուրներ եւ դրա հիման վրա փորձեք հասկանալ։ Թե արդյոք կա անհրաժեշտություն կատարել ձեր հետազոտությունը, արդյոք դուք պետք է հետ վերադառնաք եւ հասկանաք թե ո՞նն է եղել բաց թողումը եւ մի շարք այդպիսի հարցեր, փորձենք խոսել literature review-ի մասին մի փոքր ուժ, փորձեմ ձեզ տալ թիփեր, որպեսզի հեշտացնեմ այդ process-ը գրելու։ Ah, uh, so far so good. Let's move ahead with the next slide.
What makes good writing? Good writing communicates an idea clearly and effectively. Sounding elegant and smarter, do not expect to say neither in the first nor in the second. Do you know what's happened every time, guys? Like um, a student comes, like the first day I assigned to write a literature review or something else related to such kind of manuscripts, they come and say, Miss Nona, do you know that it does not sound smarter and elegant? And I'm just, are you really looking forward to sound it elegant and smart for when it comes to the first or the second round? No, guys, you need to just draft and understand whether uh, you are trying to convey your ideas properly or not. Then in the end, you need to concentrate on how to write in a good language. It is simple and easy to understand. Well, guys, when it comes to this point, from time to time students say, should the academic writing be simple and easy to understand? The answer is yes, because with your words, with your linguistic possibilities, so you're trying to convey the message in a way that it is easy to understand. The person, imagine that the person is not from your discipline, so the person needs to understand what is the key message that you're trying to convey to him or her. And you, of course, need to keep the flow because otherwise it's not going to work. Like everything should be coherent and cohesive. Writing web verbs. Uh, today I'm going to give you some tips how to write proper academic articles in English and how to facilitate the process itself. Here, my recommendation is try to use active voice rather than passive voice. Of course, when I say this, some students understand it literally. In other words, like uh, they try to write everything in active voice and kind of to neglect the possibility of using passive voice. But guys, uh, I would like to disappoint you here uh, at a point that uh, from time to time, it is impossible just to avoid passive voice. Of course, I say try to do your best to write active voice, but also do not neglect passive voice because we have a lot of ready-made chunks, a lot of expressions that are actually trying to uh, have to like exist in academic uh, manuscripts. Here I have an example, like active voice, you know that it has the subject, predicates, etc. Lucy reads many books, like this is the active voice and many books are read by Lucy. It's a passive voice, which sounds a little bit weird. Uh, for that reason, my recommendation is to use active voice. Use strong words, because you know that the verbs are the parts of speech that actually communicate the language, we drive the language. Here I have two examples for you I would like to discuss. And uh, with these examples, I would like to show you how actually it works. Loud music came from speakers embedded in the walls and the entire area moved as the hungry crowd got to its foot. Here we have certain words like came that I'm making red, move and got. Those are considered as uh, weak verbs because they do not drive the language. I try to paraphrase here a little bit in order to make it easy to understand. Here we have loud music exploded speakers embedded in the walls and the entire arena shook the hungry crowd leapt to its feet. I try to change came to exploded. I try to change here moved into shook and got into leapt. And my three words exploded, shook, and leaped, tried to better drive the language. So it means that I do not have any weak verbs. I have strong ones, and it kind of drives, the, it communicates the idea of what I was trying to say. Um, let's move ahead. In this case, I would like to introduce, and maybe some of you are familiar with this taxonomy, I would like to introduce for the rest of who may not know about it. It's called Bloom's taxonomy here with the different areas, like it has six areas here. Uh, now, uh, here we have knowledge, understand, apply, analyze, eva analyze, evaluate, and create. In the knowledge area, you can see certain words that you can use in order to move ahead with your writing. Those are the verbs that actually drive and communicate the language. You just pick one you use and your manuscript is already ready. 
I will send you a little email also this one in order to facilitate the process of writing. Like uh, actually it differentiate like with the areas like knowledge then understand and apply then analyze, but actually you can use all of them in different contexts. Please try not to be concentrated that much on this kind of areas. It is Plum's taxonomy. If you open any kind of academic writing manuscript, you will see those words used. Here I would like to speak a little bit about do's and don'ts in academic writing. Actually, here I have two parts. I will try to uh, explain it uh, for now. The first one, it says that when you're writing an academic manuscript, there is no need to use contractions. Contractions, it means apostrophes, like the shorter versions, in other words. Here I have didn't, want, can't. You need to use the full versions. Did not, will not, and cannot. Always remember that we did not have separate can and not. It's just one word. It's cannot. No personal pronouns. I, we, you, and adverbs if possible. We think that. For example, I know, guys, that uh, like then it comes to the Armenian language. We actually use I, we, you. Then we are writing Armenian short tunes and etc. But then it comes to English, it says that try to avoid, try to make everything indirect. Here I have an example to you. We think that why we use the, in this case, who are this we, you and who else? It's a question. For that reason, try to avoid it as much as possible. Instead of saying we think that, it can be said. It should be notified that, and it comes, it becomes kind of a ready-made chunk, and you can really get rid of the pronoun we. But the same refers to I, you, etc. No clockful slang vocabulary expressions. You know that in academic writing, everything should be formal. So it means that no clockful, it means slang vocabulary and expressions are not allowed. So everything should be in academic style. No direct translations from Armenian into English because it leads to the negative transfer from L1 into L2. But, uh, use uh, of ready uh, made expressions, chunks, etc. Uh, so let me explain here a little bit, like from time to time I read some manuscripts that uh, are written in English, they contain English words, letters, etc. But the meaning is totally Armenian, like it's kind of translated into Armenian into English. In order not to have this negative transfer from L1 into L2, I would recommend you either to use ready-made expressions that of course I'm going to share with you, chunks and etc. Or otherwise we need to find a native speaker, American who would help you, a linguist who would help you to get rid of this Armenian um, like ideas. So this one, keep it in your mind. And no longer mass expressions everything should be simple and as easy to catch. Always remember, guys, uh, whenever you are writing a manuscript, there is no need to try to find such kind of fancy vocabulary, long sentences, such kind of things. Try to keep everything simple and easy to catch for the reader. No gender bias. So it means that you cannot say he uh, thinks that, she thinks that. Either you need to say he or she, or just to be on the safe side, it's better to use they. So far, so good. Uh, also, let me see the Armenian versions. Tangalia were a team of concrete name, match a tangle and a kudum tuna nak as apostrophe as father, a high enough chicken and one sense as some kite molatum. I skin of the full version on a did not, will not, cannot. Porsek was appel, arachi tem, the ranunerit, yes, took, um, do ye violent. Octacorte in Chanavora, Academia can of watch, could I say, can Hosapek slang it, Hosapek each for Hosak Takan, a tight genetic pilot. Portek each can and Avora Hosapel, a hide in it, Angler and Tarkman, a Chenera, or a pet of Macmax Tasma versus Arachilas with Pokuma, Yakros Lezo Yev, on an amank watch the Dakan at Amsuma. Portek of Takortel, Patras de Arta Hetuner, Yevalian. Portek in Canavar, the Kuritish Pesartana Selepahek, Shat Parts Yev Haskanali, Yev Serakan Hatrakan Tunchun and Aluhamar, a get green kishi, Achikaki, the Grand Grand Dalberum, and come the dunk of they. Let's move ahead with the second slide. Always not moving. Wait a second. Okay, here it works. No questions and exclamatory signs. Guys, it says that uh, then you need to write in academic writing. It's not that uh, appropriate to use exclamatory signs or questions. In other words, then you uh, when you say something similar, you need to paraphrase it and make it a direct sentence. Let's consider together the example. 
can all those results adversely affect? There is a possibility that those results might may adversely affect. So it means that I try to get rid of this question mark and I have a direct sentence. And also here, here are the results of and then having different exclamatory signs. No, forget about it. But uh, from time to time, my students ask why uh, it happens like why is that uh, we need to have research questions in our academic manuscripts and how we can get rid of the questions guys if it's a research question you can keep it there is no such kind of thing that the quiz research questions should be made into direct sentence you can keep your research questions no phrasal verbs like give up think about it says that you need to use single unit verbs one word instead of giving up i can say just cancel instead of thinking about i can say consider of course bloom's taxonomy here is going to help you we have already talked about the possible use of passive voice. It says that it's better to use more active voice. For the present, guys, for the present as if you're talking about the results, et cetera, the things that you have already found, you need to use present, simple. For past, then you're talking about your data collection process, et cetera, or the literature review conducted already, you can use past simple. Use word version of the numbers uh, from nine and below, but numbers for 10 and above. Use four, seven, but 14 and 20. Use the numeral, the uh, alphabetical versions. For the muscle hyenan, I across the idea of the year. I heard that the one word can never know and not all the up and down that said. Hoski Major, Skinetta, Nakich for Hartsakan, Nahadas Chance, if I get full net come, but Sakan Chakan Shanov, for Saka Dominich Tarsnel, Abeli Ure Nahadas Tuner, Ashata Kosatel, Osapel, a phrasal verbedit, a phrasal verbedin, and came from Kunan Bayev or Kamasnik, for Saka Major the Hytel Meg Bayov, as the plumit exonomy in Saskokni, which pass after Nashele, each can never a Hosa, Hosape Gravora Cancerit, as compared to the courts at Ure. Nerkai Hamar of the courts make Nerkashamanakatev and Tilly Hamar of the courts make until Shamanakatev. Give us the honest Nasma Dari Tverik Rutuna, make it Michev Tas Kurumank Tverov, is Tasit Anko, Martin Kurumank, Tas Chersk Sant, Tvanashan Nerk with the same. Uh, thank you, Gans and Karaj. Now today we're going to talk about key concepts, critical thinking, plagiarism, paraphrasing, and rephrasing. What is critical thinking and why researchers actually need that critical thinking? In academic studies, writers and lecturers often present arguments trying to persuade to accept certain ideas by giving reasons why you should. Critical thinking involves judging those arguments, that is, deciding whether to accept them or not. Like nowadays, each day, believe me, guys thousand or even more than thousand papers are uh, represented. So you need to understand which ones are the reliable ones and which ones are not that reliable. In order to have the opportunity to differentiate between those papers, you need to use your critical thinking. It means that whatever is written in the academic manuscript, there is no need to believe. You need to understand that are the judgments, that are the reasons that the uh, person, the offer brought. So are they good enough for you to use in your own manuscript or not? If you have critical thinking, so it means that you will pick the most reliable uh, papers for your own manuscript. The most important thing that I actually like to talk with my students, it's alert plagiarism or welcome to plagiarism gallery. Because here you can see for pictures, and I'm going to talk, of course, all of them. As you see in the picture one, there is a man who is smiling and his eyes are closed. And here was some hands from the person obviously trying to steal his ideas. The person doesn't know that uh, his ideas are going to be stolen and the people are trying to kind of stall it. Uh, it means that if you're trying to steal somebody else's ideas, it means that you are plagiarizing and it's a crime. 
Let's remember, plagiarism is a crime. In the second picture, again, we see a man and another man who is trying to steal the idea. In this case, we do not know whether the man is conscious or not, but again, the man is trying to take the idea. Again, it is considered a plagiarism. In picture three, let's see that two people are in their workplace. One of them is typing and another one with his eyes closed is trying to steal the idea of the woman. Again, stealing is plagiarism. If I try to have a look at picture four, we will say that two men are working, they're kind of the co-workers. And you see that one man in the both of the screens, you will see that the two colors exist like the yellow and the red. And one man is trying to actually um, plagiarize to rewrite whatever the man is actually writing. So it means that even it is called cheating, but cheating is a plagiarism. Let's one more time recap together that plagiarism is a crime. And whether you do it knowingly or unknowingly, it is a crime. So we need to avoid it. Now a question, how to avoid plagiarism? Uh, uh, how not to plagiarize. It is unacceptable in academic culture to plagiarize. That is, to use the ideas or words of another person and pretend that they are your own. In how to avoid plagiarism. Here I have for you step-by-step -step guide. At first, do not copy and paste. Please uh, try to forget in the keyboard that such kind of thing exists. Good citations. Like here, uh, here I have EG Alice 2015. No direct translations. Understand the content and try to restate it in your own words. We will talk about, of course, paraphrasing or rephrasing, but let's now come from the very first place. Do not copy and paste. Guys, if you do copy past, it means that like actually you're plagiarizing. Forget about it. Put citations. If you even try to take somebody else's ideas and you do not want to rephrase it, put citation at the same time break it. We are going to talk about citations. I will like, teach you such kind of skills. Not direct translation. If you directly translate, translation belongs to you, but of the content is not yours. Always remember, even if you translate, you need to put citation. The thing that I would like to recommend, you need to understand the content and try to restate it in your own words. So you just basically understand it. After that, whatever you have understood, you can just restate it with your, using your own words. For some higher in Assam, copy paste the knob can have a card sheet keyboard with a quarter my color of moronal and mixed. Octa quarter my own nice text in. Is the one I'm text in for my APA style of a virtual. Elizir Quasar does not give a can. Hosing Tarkman to name my sin. I think higher in a big room to a good email can manuscript. O port to make inch for Russell and it's come on green. It's come on this with Tarkman to make for Russell and it's come on green. It's come on Hamarma Paraphrasing and rephrasing. It is a process of expressing the meaning of a written text by using different words and expressions, by changing the structure of the sentences uh, in order they uh, but keep its meaning the same. Here I have for you two guides how to do this. Uh, at, at first, I would like to represent you two definitions of the paraphrasing of rephrasing, and here I have for you four R's in paraphrasing. It's a principle. At first, paraphrasing or rephrasing is a process of expressing the meaning of a written text by using different words and expressions by changing the 
chocolate sentences, but Kippen gets many of the same. The second one, which belongs to me because I had the bookish explanations, to paraphrase as it rewrite something in your own words. Here, I would like to represent you the principle of four R's. Read, restate, recheck, repair. How I actually, when I write something, how I do, I would like to share with you my experience. At first, I read the passage, for example, such kind. Uh, after that, I try, I close the book or the journal, whatever it is. Then I try to restate it with my own words. Then I take notes and then I recheck it with the original, whether they match or not. If I see that if they match a little bit, even I try to repair. It means that I try to change the synonyms into names like, uh, not the keywords, of course, the things that are possible, the linguistic units that are possible uh, to paraphrase. I recommend to use a uh, four-hours principle because I guess that it is the easiest one. Esta cosa me verá de vaquer man más sin y hecho se reiré canoní más sin dirán que cartar artesanal portal estudiar y fue es que es pide cartón original de tu base dirán que te da para here, guys, I have for you how to paraphrase or rephrase sentences step by step. Guide. Here, I see I have six steps, but there is one step that I missed. We need to understand which step it is. Step one, linguistically analyze the sentences. Here, I, I mean color coding. Maybe you have done this in other subjects. Color coding, it means like you can code. Now as we've uh, read like uh, adjectives with blue, uh, verbs with yellow, etc. in order to understand what are the linguistic points of your sentence. After that, you need to identify the structure, whether it has subject, predicate, etc. In step three, in case of long sentences, divide them into two or three separate sentences. Imagine that you have like a passage Divide it into two or three in order to facilitate the process of paraphrasing. Here it says that you can use linkers. Step four, start your first sentence at a different point from the original source. Imagine that your sentence starts with the subject and then ends with an object. Change the places. Object bring the first place and then subject put the uh, last place, a phase as much as possible. Use synonymous in English. It's very actually easy to find synonymous to the verbs and uh, adjectives that start from like, I guess it's not going to be a problem. Change the form of the words, like nouns change into adverbs, adverbs, verbs, verbs, adjectives, etc. And step one, after doing all of these things, give a credit, cite it. You, you have done all this six steps, but again, it doesn't belong to you. Again, it is considered as a plagiarism. In order to avoid it, you need to do step seven, give a credit, cite it. I, I guess it's better to say that self-plagiarism is also plagiarism. Oh, yeah. So from time to time, as my colleague actually mentioned, self-plagiarism is also considered as a plagiarism because you cannot use your own ideas without citing yourself. Please, not this one also. Uh, Step-wise, uh, change the form of the words. 
Asamani Charity, by the link of Maruma plagiarism. What we step seven channel, Alice 2015. self-plagiarism. Hajik and academic writing. Maybe uh, I need to explain the word hajik. It means that every statement uh, is not for 100%, uh, like everything in our life is not for 100%. Let's understand what is hajik. In academic writing, it is prudent to be cautious in one statement so as to distinguish between facts and claims. This is commonly known as hajik. Hedging is the use of linguistic devices to express hesitation or uncertainty, as well as to demonstrate politeness and directness. For example, guys, you are participating in an international conference and uh, you listen to a, a talk which you think that it is not academically right. So you cannot say, hey, you know that, you know, your work is not a good one, it's irrelevant, etc. We need to hide your sentences in a way that, um, dear colleague, it appears to be that there could be some inappropriate data, etc., in your work. So let's revise together. This is called hedging. Here, of course, I have some hedging vocabulary for you, like appear to be, suggest, think, believe. I have also here some clusters, I guess. Yeah, I have it. I will show to you and we will discuss. I'm an I know I'm in charge of hedging. Uh, why do we need to hedge? We already understood that we need to hedge in order to be polite. It's in a way to express ourselves in academic writing or in also in the spoken language, etc. Uh, so here I have some vocabulary for hedging. Here we have introductory verbs. Same tend look like, appear to be, think, believe. Like certain lexical verbs. I believe that, I assume that, I suggested that. Model verbs, uh, adverbs. It's possible, it perhaps conceivably. Also, you can say maybe like to just model verbs, so I only model adverbs. It could be the case that it might be the suggestion that you guys, I have some hedging practice. Remember, nothing is for 100%. I would like to do one and two here because you know that you're going to have in the end the quiz. And in your quiz, like obviously, um, you need to have such you need to fulfill such kind of assignments the first one i'm going to explain results show that if we use these techniques we will reach x results like it seems that the sentence is actually too direct if we do this we will get this who we'll says maybe another researcher from another university will come and say oh no it's not going to work i did another one and i have totally another result in order to avoid such kind of situations I recommend you to use hedging practice. Look how I will do. Results show that if we use these techniques, we might reach X result. It means that if I exchange my will into mine, it means there is a possibility that we may have this result or might have this result. The second one, to treat COVID-19, we must use XYZ product. Another one come and say, you know, I did a similar experiment and you know, I didn't have that result. Again, we need to hedge it. To treat COVID-19, we can use, like I suggest that we can use, or there is a possibility to use XYZ products. So this overall, the process of that making a sentence, like a statement for not for 100% called hedging practice. Some other things. I uh, would love to talk about literature review. Of course, it's a really long topic. I've tried to simplify it and make it um, 
as, as that is possible. So one thing that uh, you as like new researchers and young researchers, I would like to, I would like to recommend you. It's Google Scholar. I do hope that you have heard about it, or it's called also Google Academic. It's a simple way to search for scholarly literature. Most in most cases, the sources are reliable, but there is a gray, gray literature. Uh, let me explain what is gray literature it's uh, the proceedings up to the conferences like uh you go to a conference you listen to a talk of a very prominent speaker you really enjoy that and you would like to cite his or her work in your academic manuscript you came you come home and you try to find that work but oh here is here we do not have it's not published so how you can do uh, actually, if it's great literature and if it's a really good source, I recommend you to read rather than to cite. Because if it's not uh, published, it means that it's not credible. It means that you're not going to have it because it will decrease the quality of your work. So try to avoid it, but I would recommend you to read it. If you want, of course, I can give you some databases related to great literature. I myself read and find a lot of useful resources related to great literature. So. I will give it provided to you. And here we have easily find references for any type of book. So with the Google Scholar, it facilitates the process to cite your literature, both in text and in the reference list. Uh, let's understand what is literature review and its importance. It is a way uh, to identify what is already known about the research area. So imagine that you are interested in a particular area of economics, but you do not have enough knowledge and you do not know whether another scholar from another country or another university conducted similar research or not. So it means that you need to read, find all the data related to your topic of interest and try to understand, are there any gaps for your further research or not? It helps to, to identify the gaps. Get is Armenian bots to home. Critically, Analyze the prior study. The studies, you know that in research, the critical thinking is a key point. Here, you need to critically analyze the prior studies. Always remember, guys, literature review as the key to support your statement. You say something, you need to support that something with the literature review. Say that, you know, in Moscow, the scholar did this. In Argentina, the scholar did this. In Mexico, in other country, like you need to support everything that you have said of the literature review. It's a must thing. Jose Kirakon Tiana does opportunity of the Rakara for routine in Chihamara Tarajet. Tami Uriya for Pisikaran and Kaskanal and Polar Pastor Nere Kamkatar Batta does of the Chenera Ter and a Dakh Kurov Tema issues were Patras. Kanata <laughs> Citation types, actually in English would differentiate different types of citation. It, it, it's based on the university, which university like you are studying at and which is the accepted style of writing in that university. Here we have different styles. AP is American Psychological Association. The second one is MLA, Modern Language Association. Then we have Mandalay CS, Chicago, Harvard, Vancouver, etc. Like in most universities, like in 90% of the universities, you will see APA most in Americans especially. MLA is also widely used, like it's Modern Language Association, like it's really depends, like you can use the one that is uh, accepted in your university. Here I have some useful resources. In order to check your English, guys, I would recommend you to go to Grammarly.com. Let, let us go together. Uh, so here you can uh, create an account uh, for you and log in. Here you can copy and paste text and it basically shows you all the uh, errors and inconsistencies and also plagiarism in your writing whenever you're writing in English. So it's an easy tool for you to use. Another one I would like to share with you, it's turnitin.com. 
actually the uni each university buys, buys it. So it detects the plagiarism. It's a really good one. I would like to show with my example. Uh, I have an account. Mm -hmm. This is my account. Like, let me show just one. If we go there, I submitted one of my students' accounts. Here we can see that. Uh, view if I click and block it, be attentive in this case. Like it shows the similarity percentage change Uh, <laughs> Site of Nishumat, the Vitan Cocta Cortel, the second work to Plagiat Arel, Estarelunink has half Plagiat yet Capat, inch of Kunavar Bats, and Shonokuma ink Plagiat Arel, the second text image. Yet has click on them, a site of rank, it's with Tamian comments, Monsa ink, Plagiat Arel. Drama for Sapelo SPC Senarit, Octa Cosman can technique and work for Mark. Uh, paraphrasing, rephrasing, and step by step by the circulator on said Hamar. What we see, Corona cash to temple supple, in Kashatarats, but Yerevita, Hamasan, Kitam or Polonat and Knad of Serkamberum, sir. Uh, I get a head, uh, share Ganem Tata Pazan, a grey literature head, uh, Yepo Shaki Alkirke, Hamming Perkamich of QA and Snell, it says Mikani Resource System, known as the Garage. Uh, what PC Hishmak and get the Prasama Hinakonum in my negative transfer L1 is L2, Yves has gone over to, um, like native speaker Nerchak of Garwam and Akoshaki Hantiner, or that is probably Doctor Cortelas Kirakan with Suna. Papa can in that Kirka was my academic vocabulary in use yet. It was a cooker came from Tichkova email at the back. Herinakne, Michael McCartney, and Felicity Odell. He in much Baronakoma, he sent a very unit for the Tesalisaka. No, 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 for example, what is special about academic English in Katalisa Patsat Rutuna, Heta Patsat Rutan Himambra, Kalisa Pajutunera, a pet capata richish, the hot track for Pisa Kajima Kamana Krutuneri, much of a conchish in Yavile. Horse and Talisa Polarit, Musan of Nayavas, my china, as for a campanali parable of Kajima Kamana Krutuner, much pet Kakareke Violet. Shatok Takar Kirka, Hakim Kitch advanced tie, secret income of the Rapas Pierre Kuplas Angler and Natalis, but Kasam Karia Octa Kurzel of Shaki. I'm <laughs> 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 
Zapisa and Jadinkara.